One of the perks of following the Norse gods is that every once in a while a Christian will just like call me a dirty heathen. At which point I get to say, yeah. People who follow the Norse gods tend to style themselves one of three ways, though there are others. Norse pagan, Asatru, and heathen. And while we can say that all three of these mean the same thing, we can also note that there does seem to be different trends among those who use these different labels. Now, it's important to point out that none of these differences are a matter of definition. They can all mean the same thing, and they can all refer to the same person. I have, for example, used all three of these labels in different situations. I used Asatru when I first uh, converted, but I moved away from the term. And I used, I've used uh, Norse pagan and Norse polytheist to refer to myself to people new to these concepts. And I've used heathen as more of a technical term referring to myself, especially around other pagans. Though it can be a confusing term for people that are unfamiliar with uh, paganism. So let's start with Asatru. Asatru is usually a term that people wind up finding when they're searching for the religion for the first time. They kind of want the religion to have a name, like Hinduism, Zoroastrianism, Taoism, Buddhism, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Vodun, Hellenism, Kemeticism, and the list goes on and on. Uh, but the religion surrounding the Norse gods, like some of the others on the list that I just rattled off, didn't have a name for the religion itself in antiquity. Same with some of the other polytheistic faiths of the time. They just were. But before even the migration era during the fall of Rome, and after, and then going into the Viking era and even beyond, this religion didn't have a name. The gods Thor, Tyr, and Odin, among many others, were simply the gods of these peoples. And for thousands of years, these deities were followed without a label to the act. And there wasn't a name for the faith because there didn't really need to be one. And today, many of us are ex-Christians or what have you, so... We have to describe the faith somehow. We might find the term heathen, but we have some other ideas in our head for what that means. So then we find the word asotru and we go, aha, a name for the faith. That's what I am. <laughs> and it sounds cool too, doesn't it? You know, asotru. It's a strong word. It's a modern term out of Icelandic terms, which means faith in the Aesir. And the problem with it is that it only refers to a subsection of the gods in our faith that are very focused on humanity. And some people follow other sets of gods or include other sets in their practice. And this has resulted in response terms to Asatru, such as Vanatru, Rokatru, Lokian, or Thursatru, to denote following different groups of deities. And some follow an eclectic group of deities in their hearth cult, which is the name for one's personal approach to the faith in their household. And this was done historically. We see different characters in the sagas that are particularly devoted to a specific deity or group of deities. And that representation is through the lens of Christians, so we can only take that attestation so far. But whatever the case, many, including myself, find the term asatru to be limiting in that way. There is also, as I've pointed out before, the issue of the asatru folk assembly, or AFA, that use this term asatru, which have branded themselves with an extremely racist approach to this faith. And many want to be disassociated from them as much as possible, so much as abandoning the term Asatru due to that association, which, to be honest, is part of the equation in my head as well. There's dialogue about that within the community uh, that follows our gods, but my personal approach is that I don't find it descriptive of my spirituality. And I'm not into the association with AFA anyway, so it's not the term that I use. So then there's Norse pagan. Now, I've used Norse pagan or more often Norse polytheist or Germanic polytheist when referring to myself around people who are not pagans, such as Christians or agnostics or atheists or what have you. And it has different reactions. Uh, I'm personally someone who is pretty far out of the broom closet in my life, so it's not really a huge deal for me to say that and then deal with whatever blowback takes place. My view that if is <laughs> if somebody treats you a certain way simply due to your religion, that person probably wasn't really worth forging a friendship with to begin with. So, but that's like a whole rabbit hole, and I'm not I'm not chasing that rabbit today. That rabbit's got a clock. Norse pagan can be a useful term when you want to communicate. I am pagan, and I am in this category of Norse spirituality among pagans. And the problem with this label is that pagan is not a very clear term, and it's got multiple meanings. So, it doesn't really add a whole lot of clarity to the conversation. And the word pagan is derived from the Latin paganos, which was used to refer to country folk, and then later by Christians to refer to those country folk that still engaged in pre-Christian folk practices. 
It was later broadened by Christians to refer to anyone not practicing Christianity, and then fairly recently it was used by modern practitioners trying to revive those folk practices. Now, there's a lot of discussion on what religions this modern use of the term pagan is referring. But most often the worship of Germanic or Norse deities falls into that category of paganism. But there is another issue, and this is something that has popped up among pagans, which is that those who use the term Norse pagan tend to have more eclectic practices that are more rooted in experience, which is a perspective closer to Wicca, rather than history, which is where Reconstructionists like myself are more often rooted. And this isn't a hard and fast rule, and one of the differences between labels within religions and something like scientific classification is that there aren't clear boundaries between these labels. These boundaries are often marked by gradients, not lines. So what I'm talking about is a trend, not a rule, and most certainly not a definitional rule. There are exceptions all the time. So included under the label pagan are people who are, you know, atheopagan, who don't believe in the gods, or archetypal pagans, which may or may not believe in the gods, is separate from us, or they might believe in the gods in a different way than others. So what I'll often do is say polytheist instead of pagan, as that clears things up fairly quickly, and it removes me from the confusion around the term pagan and into something that's easier to define. Now, am I still pagan? Yeah, <laughs> it's an incredibly broad umbrella, and I am under that umbrella. Uh, but this is about communication, and often communication is helped by limiting the vague terms and bringing in more specific ones. Which brings us to heathen, the term that I use for myself most often, so, you know, bias noted. Uh, remember the term paganos that I mentioned earlier, Latin for country dweller? Well, the term heathen is the Germanic form of the same idea, which later became the Christian term for the you know, non-Christians or unbelievers of whatever sort. But the reason why it's used to refer to our religion is that it's the name used in the sagas within our faith. They're written by Christians, but the people are consistently referred to as heathens. The saga of Greenlanders, for example, introduces the people of Greenland by saying heathen were the people of Greenland at that time. As a result, since the religion has no name, why not use the word within our sagas? From that perspective, it's what our religion was called, heathen, or heathen. And it's been used modernly as the word to describe the faith since around the 60s, 70s or so, when the religion cropped up in several you know, revival movements independently. And it's also divorced from a lot of the complications that come with the word asatru, mainly the issues of it being limited to the Aesir gods. And uh, the issue of it being an Icelandic term as well, Asatru is most often used as a term for Icelandic heathenry, whereas there are other heathens of various Germanic traditions. There are Norse heathens, there are Anglo-Saxon heathens, Frankish heathens, and sometimes Slavic polytheism is considered Slavic heathenry. Those who use the term heathen tend to lean Reconstructionist and polytheist uh, and subscribe to the cosmology of the well and the tree, that time is woven by the Norns into the web of the weird, and that we, through our decisions as we wander down these threads woven before us, make our contributions to the well. But the term isn't without confusion. Um, obviously, when people first see it, they have this image in their heads of how Christians have been using the term for centuries to just mean non-Christian, just as they use pagan. Uh, so there's been actually a bit of a tug of war between atheists and heathens over the use of the term in order to refer to atheists, which is a tactic that was employed by atheist activist turned pathetic Twitter edgelord David Silverman of taking ownership of a term used to deride atheists. And he likely wasn't aware of the religious movement at the time, and <laughs> he likely wouldn't have cared if he did. Personally, uh, I'd rather that atheists quit using the term in this way. If only because it's harder to find heathen content when atheists keep using it as another word for atheist on their podcasts or call-in shows. So I know a lot of atheists are just going to like kind of dig in when they hear this kind of thing because they're not often known for being polite to religions. But whatever, man, I've I've stated my opinion on the matter. And honestly, a lot of the atheists that I've spoken to have been receptive on this issue. But beyond the issue of atheists using it as a synonym for themselves, heathen will sometimes get a reaction out of people not familiar with it simply because they think that you're just trying to say you're not a Christian in some edgy way. And that can give an impression that you're not quite trying to make. But one of the perks as well as downsides of having a little known faith is that you can tell people specifically what you are and have it just go soaring over their heads. <laughs> I'll even say, I worship Thor, straightforwardly. And people will think that it's sarcasm. And if I don't want to continue the conversation, I'll just leave it there. But the situation, in situations where you want to communicate 
you can either explain it or you can use one of these other common terms. As I said in the beginning of this video with non-pagans, I'll often just say Norse polytheist. Usually though, following that, there's <laughs> usually though, following that, there's like a torrent of questions and I can be cornered into a conversation that never ends. And living in the South, that can sometimes be unpleasant. So use at your own discretion. Anyway, I hope I've cleared some things up for you or perhaps just confused you more. If you're confused, don't worry. Same. But religion is often not so clear cut. It has a lot of wiggly lines and gradients to work through. And to me, that's one of the things that makes it so interesting. And with that... Hail to my patrons for making this content possible. It's good to have people at your back. Hit the subscribe button and ring the bell and call it many names. And remember to find a way or make one. <laughs> <laughs>